If you're interested in natural systems agriculture, I think you'll enjoy visiting Paradox Farm in rural Ashby. Let's meet a couple leaders in Minnesota's sustainable farming movement. Welcome to Paradox Farm uh, near Ashby, Minnesota. I'm Sue Wicca and um, I own and operate this farm with my partner, Tom Pree. And uh, we've been here in the beautiful Oak Savannah since the year 2000 and we just feel uh, very at home here in this place. What we strive to do here at Paradox Farm is uh, we consider ourselves a natural systems agriculture is what's going on here. And what we're really trying to do is observe what's going on in our ecosystem and seeing what this land really wants to do. I have a background and training in permaculture. One of the main emphases of permaculture is to really to take some time to slow down and observe what's around you. We observed what the land could do and what we're currently doing is integrating lots of variety of, of fruit trees, currants, uh, gooseberries, many different types of, of heirloom and types of, of apples. Hazelnuts grow very abundantly in the wild out here and we love to be able to produce our own oils. We want to work with our land here. And what we inherited here as far as uh, ecosystems going in the year 2000 when we came was uh, grasslands had been CRP which after extended periods kind of turns into almost a lifeless grass landscape, if you will. So our first step was following the Greg Judy model of high density grazing was to bring in cattle and high density grazed for uh, several years. And in the meantime, we always had our dairy goats too. And they were helping us clean up the prickly ash while producing milk. And then of course the acorns and the leaves and the brush, they all like that. So that worked very well. And after the cattle, we became more and more move towards the small ruminants and this the handleability of them and the more versatility of them as far as using our little nooks and crannies and hills and various access points around here. We've really found that in, in this particular little part of the world where uh, we have a gravel underbase and not a whole lot of topsoil, the perennials are the thing we need to be doing here with, with minimum tillage or no tillage, really. We uh, use the perennials for our harvesting of the solar energy around here. This is one of our winter loafing sheds for our sheep and goats, and it's just a very simple tin structure that we made out of reclaimed steel. And so we made a very simple three-sided structure, and then we put polycarb panels in the front, and the uh, animals love loafing in there in the very coldest days in January, as long as we've got some sun. It's quite toasty in there. That's been a really easy way to use passive solar energy just to create some more comfort for our animals in the winter. This is our main herd buck, Guinness. He is uh, an alpine Nubian cross. We call this our boy band out here, and our buck, our ram, and some <laughs> of our mature weathers, they're in charge of brush hogging some of our oak savanna cells out here and uh, they're doing a really good job in opening up the oak savanna here so that you can walk through and not get caught on all of the prickles out here. Uh, this is one of our yearling weathers. This is a uh, Kiko boar cross over here and uh, we're anticipating that he will be broke to harness because he has a super good personality and he leads really light. And then the boy sleeping over here in the ground, that's uh, Pinky and he's a three-year-old weather and he is broke to harness and he can pull a chariot and pull a little wagon or drag some small logs around so he'll do a little work for us probably later this fall and uh, this winter. In addition to being a farmer, um, I'm also an instructor. Uh, my PhD is in sociology and um, it's a great fit with agriculture because uh, we're very much interested in people on the landscape as well as food production on the landscape. I'm a veterinarian by training. Uh, 
a large animal veterinarian, so that meant working on farm animals and the horses uh, for 25 years and then got into the teaching business and then that morphed into uh, an equine science program and this uh, food production program up at uh, Fergus Falls there. So it was kind of just been a natural journey that way. We milk share. We only milk once a day. The calves get all the all the rest oh, of the milk. Oh, okay. So uh, nobody can raise a calf like Mama. But then we just milk the cows in the morning. Then put the calves back out, and they have all the rest of the milk all day long. A few years ago, I and some farmer colleagues of mine who are also very much interested in uh, natural systems agriculture, grass-based dairy person, nearly organic vegetable production, so on and so forth, we dreamed up a one-year diploma program called Sustainable Food Production. And what the real undergirding of that program was a very holistic approach to educating um, another generation to being food producers. A lot of our students, in addition to learning the science of production and how to run a business, they're keenly interested in the community aspect. And what we found is uh, in three years of the program is that many of our students became rooted in the community, even if they were you know, not originally from Otter Tail County. They're leading all sorts of fabulous efforts. They're starting farmers markets, starting their own organic dairies. They're on the PTA, they go to local churches, and they're very much involved in their community. We're very proud that our, our people have wanted to really root into the landscape and do more than produce food. They're producing community and uh, neighborhoods. To learn more about Farm Skills 101, the sustainable food production program taught by Tom, Sue, and Kent Solberg, visit the Sustainable Farming Association's website 